Elon Musk has always been a man with visions of overstepping the boundaries of what may seem impossible. In 2001, he dared to dream that one day Americans could build their own rockets instead of depending on Russian technology. Then, in 2002, people witnessed the birth of the space exploration corporation SpaceX, founded by someone who did not know much about rockets, Mars, or space technology. So far, SpaceX has become the top company in the aerospace industry. At the same time, he also set an ambitious goal of building a super powerful rocket to serve his multi-planetary dream. Many people ridiculed him because at that time, for them, that type of rocket was just spent on aliens. Today, he has wowed the world with his masterpiece, Starship, the world's largest and most powerful rocket ever built. And its flight test in November 2023 became a hot topic in many newspapers. Furthermore, he recently hinted at the incredible successor of Starship Version 1, a much better rocket called Starship Version 2. That, he says, contains more propellant, weighs less, and is more reliable. Of course, at this point, no one dares to mock him anymore because they are aware that for Elon, nothing is impossible. Even though it hasn't been long since the second launch of the full Starship rocket, Musk has already begun talking about a second version of Starship. Musk shared this news with a tease of a post on X, showing the four currently assembled Starship vehicles at Starbase, saying, four more Starships, the last of V1. This is like a farewell to the first generation of Starship that has been with the company for several years and signaling an another version rocket would be coming in the future. In 2020, SpaceX first introduced the Starship V1. Before that, the company had built several Starship prototypes, but the V1 prototype was the first one designed for an orbital test flight. In the comments section below, many viewers expressed interest in this news and were eager to know what's new in the next generation. Not making fans wait long, Elon Musk immediately answered with a tweet. Version 2 of the ship holds more propellant, reduces dry mass, and improves reliability. Seemly, to explain the birth of the next generation, Musk, in a later post, wrote that Starship is intended to carry a lot of people on tens of thousands of flights, so needs to be extremely reliable over time. It will be, Musk wrote. To be honest, I'm pretty sure that the idea of a second variant of Starship was not recently conceived by the CEO of SpaceX. It could have been around for a long time. You can see that in Elon's previous tweets, hinting at changes in the next version. Yeah, perhaps this new variant has already been assembled, and whether it will be released or not depends on the success of IFTO2. Fortunately, its predecessor performed quite well during the November event, so SpaceX only needs to fix or add a few things before its debut. It is expected that the new ships will have nine engines instead of six, including six vacuums and three sea levels, an additional three vacuums compared to the current version having six Raptors. With nine Raptor engines, the ship's thrust will amount to about 5 million pounds of thrust in the case of using Raptor 2, 50% more than that of six engines. Yeah, three more engines for the meaning of life. Adding more Raptor means more propellant needed, about 1,800 tons instead of 1,200 tons, and, of course, this will likely lead to the extended tank area to hold more propellant. As a result, the length of the whole rocket will be longer. Remember the tweet in September of Elon, likely to be 10% to 20% longer in later versions. So what does it mean? If the 20% longer development happens, then the stacked rocket will be 144 meters long. Adding 24 meters would be over 60% of the length of the Space Shuttle Orbiter, uh, which was 37 meters long. The SpaceX Starship upper stage is 50 meters long. If this is made 20% longer, then it would be 60 meters long. The Space Shuttle on the launch pad with its external fuel tank and side boosters was 56 meters tall, 184 feet. If fuel in Starship increased, then the stretched payload volume might increase to 1,400 cubic meters. 
This will be beneficial for future Starship missions involving exploring deep space, carrying cargo in bulk, and refueling in orbit. Taking the example of refueling in orbit in the upcoming Starship mission, NASA's Artemis III, NASA expects SpaceX to launch at least 16 Starships to perform the moon landing. Starship cannot fly directly to the moon, but must refuel in Earth orbit before setting out for deep space. The Starship human landing system is just one vehicle requiring a single launch, but adding in all the launches needed for the fuel depot takes the total required into the high teens. The reason why the space agency required such many launches is that it's necessary to fill the fuel depot and they have to take place in a short period of time because of the boil-off associated with the cryogenic fuel. However, things don't stop there as Elon Musk disagreed, calling the need for 16 launches extremely unlikely in an August 2021 social media post. He said, Max of eight tanker launches should be needed to fill 1,200-ton tanks of Lunar Starship, adding it could be as few as four. Now, we don't know the final conclusion of this debate as to how many Starships will be launched, but imagine if the Starship V2 tanker, with the expanded payload capacity, is on time for Artemis III. Well, both SpaceX and NASA can solve the difficult math related to the number of tankers for fueling the depot, meaning Starship will not have to fly much and the lunar lander will have enough propellant for its journey. On the other hand, some say that larger payloads and more engines tend to lead to increased weight, so how can Elon reduce the dry mass of the rocket? First of all, you should forget or should not forget his tweet on 22 saying, the next-gen Raptor engine that is robust enough not to require a heat shield. For Raptor's regular variants, the heat shield is used to protect more delicate things like wiring, plumbing, etc. from the heat of the exhaust coming out of the engines. These covers, which are made of stainless steel, also used in many areas beneath the vehicle, which could be related to the extra heating in that area. Because of the material's properties as well as its wide coverage in engine parts, the heat shield plays an important role in adding mass to the Raptor engine. Once that steel shield is partially or completely removed, the total dry mass of the engine is significantly reduced. Another way to install three additional engines without gaining the rocket's weight is to focus on the thrust aspect. Indeed, nine engines will generate more thrust, meaning less gravity losses during ascent, which means more payload capacity, so SpaceX does not need to upsize the rocket much. The third possibility is that they will use thinner steel, but that seems unlikely. Thinner steel would also need more internal supports, which would add more weight. Actually, SN7.2 was tested with three millimeters of steel instead of four millimeters back in January 2021, so maybe they are switching to that. Obviously, when a rocket is lightweight and equipped with a powerful, high-performance engine group, it is easy to understand why it is expected to be highly reliable in the operational phase. Anyway, all of the above analysis is based on the sources I have collected so far. Anything can be changed. Wow, it's so fast. Do you believe that SpaceX has revealed Starship version 3? Meanwhile, just two months ago, we saw his announcement about the end of version 1 and the fact that version 2 is coming next. Couldn't believe how fast they went. So what is special about this new version? SpaceX always knows how to please its fans by actively sharing information surrounding its rocket development process, especially Starship. As a result, SpaceX fans like you and I sometimes believe we know enough about Starbase's day-to-day -day operations. However, the reality is a little different, as SpaceX still keeps a lot of information to itself, and what they show us may just be the tip of the iceberg. Crazy to think how quick the Starship team was when version 1's second flight test was just completed two months ago, but they now enter a much higher level with Starship's third version while the second version remains X-Factor. In the SpaceX company talk recently, Elon Musk talked proudly about the miracle things that his company had made. As I was saying earlier, rapidly reusable, reliable rocket. Yeah. And we've got yeah, a block, sort of a version 2 ship that will be 
more reliable, better performance endurance. We've got a, a version three shiv design that will stretch that that be even taller. Probably end up being I don't know 140 meters before it's all said and done. Maybe 150 in the end in in, in length. Yeah, so it'll be even taller <laughs> than it currently is. According to Musk, version three will be the largest rocket ever, taller than its two predecessors. Honestly, it's not surprising that Starship versions will get higher and higher in the future. He also hinted at this in a tweet last September, likely to be 10% to 20% longer in later versions. With 150 meters in height, the V3 will be higher than V1 up to 25%. Based on the previous speculations, version 2 will be stretched to 10% to get 132 meters in fully stacked status, meaning V3 will be higher than V2 by roughly 20 meters. Because Elon Musk did not go into detail, we can draw educated speculations based on the progression from Starship V2. Version 2 is poised to feature nine Raptor engines, a notable increase from the current six engines. In version 3, we haven't heard anything about expanding the diameter, so let's assume the number of Raptors remains at nine. Thus, to lift up a bigger mass, SpaceX might introduce a more potent version of the Raptor engine to further enhance payload capacity. Along with teasing a Starship V2, Musk also highlighted the development of its next-generation Raptor 3 engine, which he said would have a higher ISP than the Raptor 2, generate 20% more thrust, and achieve 350 bar chamber pressure, 269 tons of thrust. Thanks to 269 tons of thrust each Raptor V3, SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy is expected to generate 19.5 million pounds in total at liftoff, nearly three times the power of NASA's Saturn V. Saturn V is the rocket that propelled NASA Apollo astronauts to the lunar surface. It generated 7.6 million pounds of thrust. However, when Saturn V retired, NASA developed a new rocket called the Space Launch System, which generates a maximum thrust of 8.8 .8 million pounds. NASA says the operational rocket exerted more power than any rocket ever when it lifted off in November 2022. But see how SpaceX Starship humiliated the SLS during two recent flight tests with its capability to generate twice the thrust of the SLS. Additionally, Raptor V3 will be reliable enough not to require a heat shield. For Raptor's regular variants, the heat shield is used to protect more delicate things like wiring, plumbing, etc. from the heat of the exhaust coming out of the engines. These covers, which are made of stainless steel, also used in many areas beneath the vehicle, which could be related to the extra heating in that area. Because of the material's properties as well as its wide coverage in engine parts, the heat shield plays an important role in adding mass to the Raptor engine. So how did SpaceX remove the heat shield without harming the engine itself? Elon explained that, If we can delete and integrate enough secondary structure, small fiddly bits, then we can locally protect rest and delete engine heat shields. Oh, really? Do you think that Raptor V3 can be reliable without the heat shield? Share your opinion in the comments. Next, before continuing, if you found this information useful, let's subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. Then, the appearance of the more powerful Raptor V3 also leads to another question. Does the Raptor V3 consume more fuel or not? In other words, how much propellant is needed for a bigger rocket, namely Starship V3? Theoretically, six engines require 1,200 tons of propellant, while the amount of propellant for nine engines is 1,800. I'm pretty sure that this principle also works for Starship V3's upper stage, no matter which type of Raptor it uses. And, the boosters use Raptor 3 engines, but we'll likely not see a lot of change apart from that. In short, this third generation of rocket might not consume more propellant than V2. Or even Raptor V3 will most likely be more optimized to save more energy, thereby decreasing the necessary amount of propellant. This makes sense because Elon's purpose to increase the rocket's size is to expand the rocket's payload capacity.
not carry extra propellant for the additional engines. He confirmed that. Starship is intended to carry a lot of people on tens of thousands of flights, so needs to be extremely reliable over time. It will be. Tens of thousands of people is an extremely impressive number, much larger than the currently announced number of 100 people. It explains why expanding payload capacity is always a priority for the company. In addition, if you stay up to date on Artemis 3's progress, you will know that SpaceX plans to launch roughly 10-ish Starship tankers to fill a depot. This is the company's significant attempt to reduce the needed launches in Artemis 3 instead of the high teens number previously given by NASA. Of course, to make it happen, the tanker's payload area must be stretched as much as possible. Another possibility is that the Starship V3 will not have a significant difference in weight compared to its Starship V2 and not be much heavier than the V1. Bigger but does not mean heavier, and this is true for Starship case as SpaceX always follows the spell. The best part is no part. It starts with the engine part. Once the steel heat shield is partially or completely removed, the total dry mass of the engine is significantly reduced. Not that enough. As I said, if SpaceX can make the Raptor V3 consume less energy, then the amount of propellant required for each launch will not matter. One way to install three additional engines without gaining the rocket's weight is to focus on the thrust aspect. Indeed, nine engines will generate more thrust, meaning less gravity losses during ascent, which means more payload capacity, so SpaceX does not need to upsize the rocket much. The third possibility is that they will use thinner steel, but that seems unlikely. Thinner steel would also need more internal supports, which would add more weight. Actually, SN 7.2 was tested with 3 millimeters of steel instead of 4 millimeters back in January 2021, so maybe they are switching to that. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.